Good morning once again, and of course, welcome to The Breakfast here on PLUS TV Africa. As always, we kickstart the show every morning by sharing with you major stories across the country, uh, making headlines. And we have two people that will be analyzing these stories for us this morning. First of all, we'll say good morning to our guest in the studio, Mr. Bulahon Lodjidi. Good morning. Thanks for joining good us. Good morning, sir. Nice to be here. Uh, we also have uh, joining us uh, via Zoom, uh, Mr. Demola Kingbola, the uh, publisher of uh, the Podium Media. Thank you also. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Good right, morning. Let's jump Good right morning. in with the Guardian newspaper. Now, the story is the buzz, like I said earlier. Farewell, Trump. Welcome, Biden. And it says here 2,500 National Guard troops in Washington, D.C. for Biden's inauguration. It says here yeah, Biden to reverse Trump's policies during first days in office. Cabinet nominees face Congress screening. And here there's, there's, there's information that uh, there's a plan to infiltrate inauguration, and that's according to the FBI. Households under pressure, says Buhari's Economic Advisory Council chair. FG stresses February 9 deadline as telcos collects 47.8 million nins. KUKA gets a new appointment in Vatican. A Mufe selected for Black Movie Festival in Geneva. As well as this one saying new airlines to launch amid survival and viability concerns. And uh, yes, details there on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Let's begin with our guest that joins us uh, via Zoom, Mr. Adimola Kimbola. Would you like to talk about the Biden inauguration today? Oh, yes, definitely. It's a new dawn, it's a new day for America. Um, this is the thing that we've been waiting for. Everybody is excited. Uh, we see a lot of possibilities in the Biden administration. Uh, the last four years, America has been sharply divided. Um, that's why it is bad. But Biden coming on signifies a new beginning. I mean, the general talk on the streets of America is back. America is back. Everybody is happy. Uh, there's frenzy. And just a point of correction, there are 25,000 national guards, not 2,500, 25,000. And that one that's called seriousness with which uh, the issue of security is being addressed. So we are quite happy that this is happening. And we hope that the Biden administration will put an end to divisive policies, mm -hmm. racism, antagonistic tendencies that signposted the four years of uh, Donald Trump. Mm. And for us as African-Americans, we will say so far so good. That's what the appointment that we've seen. And expectations are quite high that Biden will do a very good job in the next four years. Mm. And Mr. Olojide, would you agree with Mr. Akimbola that it's, you know, his inauguration is a new beginning? Well, it's a continuum, really. But you say radical departure uh, from what we had over the last uh, four years. Um, you have the liberal, or liberal on one side and the conservative on the other side. And the policies are quite clear for most issues, uh, unlike a PDP, a PC situation that you have around Indeed, here. Indeed. Yeah. The, 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 um, oh, well, hopefully we come back to this. Um, you know, of course, uh, there's also arguments about, you know, how, you know, Barack Obama, you know, maybe disappointed. Um, when there was a lot of uh, expectations, you know, of him as the first, you know, black American president, um, you know, the, the, do you share similar fears, you know, with um, Kamala Harris, you know, taking the seat as vice president-elect? I, I, I don't think so. Um, Obama came in at a very low point of America's economy. And he brought that economy back on. And most of the things they promised to do, from the Guantanamo Bay intervention to the health care program, he got them done. And America gave him another four years of, mm. of presidency. You know, uh, there are always narratives that seeks to push some people out of mainstream American politics. But I think that is what people like Biden would try to reestablish. That look, all these people here are 
Americans mm. as well. I can't wait for us to dive right into the discussion later on on The Breakfast. But yes. let's, uh, let's uh, look at something else on the front page of The Guardian newspaper. We all remember when uh, Reverend Father Kuka uh, wrote that message on Christmas Day, you know, outlining the security challenges facing the country and how he was so bitterly attacked from all sides. And now he's getting up an appointment in the Vatican. Would you say this is a, a, a case of a prophet not being appreciated in his own hometown or, or the stone that the builder has rejected has become the cornerstone? Or how, how, would you, how would you quantify this? I, I think it's, it's something well-deserved uh, for Kuka. Uh, he has been a consistent advocate of good governance in Nigeria. Not be today. Military era, all the way back since he was at the uh, uh, Catholic Secretariat in Abuja, I've, I've been following this gentleman. So as far as advocacy and consistency is concerned, you cannot take it away from Kuka. So if Vatican is recognizing that and honoring him, beautiful. Okay. There are the issues of certain choice of words in the December, whatever, you know. But I hope we're getting past mm. that. All right. Let's, 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 let's bring in Mr. Uh, Akimbola, who joins us uh, via Zoom. Which of which other story on, on the front page of The Guardian would you like us to address before we turn over uh, to the next paper? I want us to look at the February 9th deadline as it relates to um, the NIN. I read somewhere this morning that over 160 million SIM cards are yet to be linked to the NIN. And my question is, are we going to be able to achieve that between now and 9th of February? Obviously, like Osaro said, this is something that has been done as a knee-jerk response to a very important requirement. Obviously, 9th February deadline is not going uh, to work. It's, we're not going to get much done. I don't see us being able to achieve 50 to 60%. So what happens? And there are talks that I make want to link that to voter registration. What it means, obviously, is that a lot of people will be disenfranchised. So at the end of the day, you ask, what would we have gained from this whole exercise? So my own suggestion is let's move the deadline forward. Let's let's encourage more people. Let's create structures. And this is happening during this COVID-19 period. People are scared of going out. So I really do not see why government is insisting on February 9, knowing fully well that 70% of the period which you have been used for this has been taken um as as has been used by, by, by various COVID uh initiatives so let's think of pushing the deadline forward to allow more people to get registered right. so that we don't have chaos in okay so let's quickly move to this uh, daily sun um mr kimbola i'm gonna start with you also on this one uh, the big one there you know and i think i would like both of you to speak on this it's from Kogi state where the governor says uh, covid19 vaccines meant to kill us Kogi State Governor says, um, INEC fixes Anambra gubernatorial election for November 6th. Also, uh, still talking on um, the Kogi State, federal government considers vaccines outside Pfizer, beyond tech, laments high storage costs. In Lagos State, why we opened schools despite coronavirus spike, Governor Song Wo Lu says. And um, also this morning on the Daily Sun, or your recorded low armed robbery incidents in 2020, and that's from the police. Uh, U.S. new era as Biden assumes office today. NIN SIM reg registration continues till February 9th, says the NCC. And we've all also spoken about these ones already, the story on uh, Bishop Kuka. So let, let's take the big one, and that is on COVID-19. Mr. Akimbola, I'll start with you. The Kogi state governor yeah. doesn't seem to believe a lot of the theories concerning COVID-19. I remember an interview we had with one of his uh, special advisors here on the bre breakfast um, weeks ago, and he basically was saying that he didn't believe or the state didn't agree that the figures from COVID-19 Nigeria were real. Um, didn't even believe that um, the former the late president's chief of staff, Abba Kiari, died from COVID-19 and the president was being lied to, according to him. So let's start with, you know, what, you know, this means for you. Uh, I would like to say up front that I do not believe that the governor said that. I really do not believe. And if it turns out to be true that he, he did say that, there is quite unfortunate for a governor in 21st century Nigeria to make such a sweeping statement. It, it's so unfortunate. I don't want to believe that he spoke from the position of ignorance. I don't want to believe that he said that. 
But given his antecedents on this same issue, remember there was a time he insisted that there was no COVID-19 in Kogi State until I think the chief judge also passed. So it, it, it worries some why someone like Yaya Bello would come out to make such a statement at a time some Nigerians are sneaking out of the country to get vaccinated in overseas countries. A sitting governor is declaring that COVID-19. So what exactly is it trying to achieve? I don't know. So I, I, I really think the presidency should address such an issue. The task force on COVID-19 should issue a statement uh, to, 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 to seriously reprimand him. Honestly, he is a leader that we all look forward to and for him to come out to see such um, I mean, to make such a sweeping declaration is quite unfortunate. It's sad. All right. So um, it's quite regrettable. Yeah. So a lot of you also quickly share. Okay. And, and there is also, uh, let me just quickly say, there is a video um, where he made the, those statements. He referred to uh, what happened in Kano a couple of years ago and said that, you know, for example, the polio vaccine um, that was given in Kano, you know, led to, you know, the cripple, you know, uh, our kids being crippled, you know, and uh, very negative effects back then. That's what he referred to. And then, you know, you know, Spoke about this. if everybody believes in COVID and you choose not to believe, you become a center of attraction. So in my opinion, it was only looking for attention. So if 100 people, 99 said there is COVID, one said there is no COVID, that is the one that will attract the most attention. So as far as I'm concerned, it was just looking for a little bit of attention. I, I hope he gets it. Uh, but I think there's someone who can speak to this gentleman and it's the president. So you call a person like this because what he's saying is derailing the efforts of some other people in that same direction. I say PTF that is making all the effort to do this, to do that, and then a leader of thought in the society goes the other way and said, there is no COVID. They want to kill you. If they want to kill you, they will have you. don't even manufacture uh, uh, basic capsules here. You know, you buy everything. Even the vaccine that was given to him, that he has given to his own children, we're not made in Nigeria. So if they wanted to kill him, they would have killed everybody. Hmm. All right. Do we now turn to the next newspaper, Nigerian Tribune? The big story here still is about COVID-19. It says, Lagos oxygen demand rises to 350 cylinders per day. Oh Hassan Olu says 24,000 students yet to report in public schools. Edo deploys 200 policemen to enforce use of face masks. Kano directs civil servants to stay at home, imposes fresh ban on event centers. Nigeria has capacity to store up to 400,000 doses of Pfizer vaccine. That's according to the federal government. There's a cooker story here as well. And three dead as fire and five vehicles burnt as tanker explodes in Abe Okuta. And government bans tankers, articulated vehicles from plying Ogun bridges. This one here says, seven day ultimatum. Continue your dialogue with Fulani communities. Presidency tells Akira Dulu. So yes, we know Akira Dulu came out to say that, uh, uh, give an ultimatum for, for herdsmen to leave the forest in the state, but the government is asking him to continue to dialogue instead. It says, you are least expected to oust thousands of herders. This one says, no going back. Legal users of forests must register with government. That's the Ondo government insisting. And the Fernie Ferry is saying, a curator acted responsibly. And uh, there's just so much back and forth on this issue. And this one here says, gunmen abduct Don, kill son in Zaria. Or you're to pay Oshun 8 billion naira for Lautech assets sharing. Senate won't fight Buhari to please anyone. And Anambra government poll holds November 6th. All right, let's, uh, let's bring in Mr. Himbola for this one, first of all. Which of the stories would you like to address? Yes, I want to talk about the face-off, seeming face-off between the Ondo State government and the federal government on this Earthman issue. It, it's just so unfortunate. Um, and this is one of the reasons why people call for the structuring of this country. Security is on the concurrent list. I'm not sure it's on the exclusive list, and which means that both the federal government and state government have uh, input. But in a situation where you call the governor of a state, the chief security officer of a state, and yet he doesn't have full control over what goes on in the state, then we, we, we 
just we just um, joking. This man, the governor never asked them to leave from the state. What he said was that they should get registered with the service. And if you fail to register, then you leave the state. I think that's just a fair thing to say. That's a fair thing to do in an attempt to structure the operations, to streamline what they do, and to make sure they are accountable. What is the business of the presidency in coming out with a statement that literally pours cold water on an attempt by state government to bring the situation under control? Okay, you could argue that the same statement was made by the by, by federal government when the Muslim clerics ask Koka to leave the north. Okay. So in one breath, the federal government is trying to play the game of okay, we don't want things to get out of hand. Every Nigerian has the right to live any in any part of the country. That is fine. But you have no business coming up with a statement that that obviously contradicts and defeats the purpose of what the government is trying to do. So the governor has responded, saying, we stand by what we have said. They need to register or they leave. Mm. Right. Whoever <laughs> who, who, who is going to blink first. Mm. So these are issues that we need to tackle. Who exactly should have the final say on security yes. matters? All right? A big question. And also, okay. big question, yeah. And, 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 and also, what stopped the presidency from having a private telephone discussion with the governor from those states to say, look, why not do it this way? When you each such a statement, you are further emboldening the earthmen. There are good ones among them, but there are also criminal elements among them. If you refer also to what Sunday Igbo said in an interview yesterday, uh, this guy is in the state, he narrated his encounter when he visited the Seliki of the Fulanis in Ibarakwa area. And the account was shocking. And what it, 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 it turns out to me is that there is an unseen hand somewhere in Abuja that is uh, propping Fulani Earthmen, that is encouraging them to do what they are doing. So they know that they have the federal government tacit approval. So right. I don't know how we're going to get out of this. Okay, let, let's because quickly right now, bring in... Um... Yes. Ms. Aulogi Day, uh, to quickly speak on that. And also alarming, you're seeing 350 uh, cylinders per day um, in just Lagos, uh, the oxygen demand. Well, let, let's start with the Ondo the, the, State the, first. The, the, the Ondo State thing, I, I believe it can be resolved. Uh, because the, the, the current approach, if you say, headsmen leave the forest area of Ondo State, then there is likely to be trouble in all the neighboring states as well. Because when they leave, where do they go to? So I, I think it's something that the governors around that axis need to talk about and, and find a better approach to dealing with the matter. In the real sense, the headsmen, there are those who are just doing their businesses. They've been there. Some have been in Yoruba land for 300 years. What are we talking about? But there are also criminal elements. And, on, and they are harboring those criminal elements. How do you separate the real guys? from the criminal element. So we need to work out this thing and ensure it's in the best interest of, 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 the, of the state and, and the people. Uh, the other thing you want to is, is about the oxygen. This, is, this, this relates to this last story we took. When someone is sitting somewhere and saying, vaccine is to kill you, there is no COVID and all that, and the people who are here on ground are feeling the COVID, 350 cylinders per day. It is not a joke. Are we saying that the people they are plugging all this oxygen on is because they have, uh, 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 they have malaria or, or, or they have a uh, Is that why they are, they, are, they are on oxygen? No. If you go to it, a friend of mine was at one of the hospitals. I mean, let me not uh, uh, mention him. He said people were receiving oxygen under the tree. Yes. Because the entire uh, 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 was filled up. In the passages, people were there hooked onto oxygen. Under the tree, he saw people hooked onto oxygen. And then somebody comes up there and says, there is no COVID, they just want to kill us. And all. If they want to kill, they will have killed you. Now, what do you have? Hmm. Uh, all right. Um, Mr. Akim, well, I want to, you know, squeeze in with the few minutes, maybe two minutes we have left. Let me squeeze you in with the Punch newspapers uh, this morning. It says here, INEC planning to make NIN compulsory for voter registration. Also, Nigeria's cooking gas consumption rises, exceeds 1 million metric tons. And uh, we also have a mixed reactions trail Okorocha's call for new political alliance. 
Um, I'm going to move from stories that we've already taken. Gunmen kidnap Lagos Varsity Deputy VC in Nasarawa, demand 20 million naira. And um, well, Trump shuns Biden as new president's inauguration holds today. So let's quickly just have you speak on NIN being compulsory for voter registration. And then we can bring in uh, Mr. Olodje Day on um, Okorocha's new political alliance. Thank you. That's, that's ill advice. It, it's, it's a decision by INEC that makes no sense to me because, it's, like I said earlier on, it will end up disenfranchising quite, quite a lot of people. Remember the case of BVN? A lot of people still couldn't get their BVN done even several months after the deadline. So, INEC saying, oh, we want to link it. You, you may say, okay, 20, unless you are staying for 2023 presidential election, in which case we have enough time. But if there are elections coming in the next three, four months and you want to start doing that, it's ill-advised. It uh, may sound good in concept, but in reality, it's not going to work. Let me, let me just quickly address this, you know, and maybe we might be wrong with this, but I'm going to take a risk. I, I, the videos and the pictures that we've seen of crowds gathering in Alausa and other places in Lagos to get registered uh, for the NN, there's nothing like that coming from northern Nigeria. I've not seen those crowds rushing to get their NINs and get their seams linked in, in the north. Hmm. At the end of the day, they will end up also voting, even without NIN. So that's what I'm saying. INEC is just playing to the gallery. And my question is this, isn't there a better way for us to achieve this objective than getting people to queue endlessly? Isn't there a way we can bring in technology to make things easier for everybody? I don't know. All right. I don't know. It, 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 it's a good question. Before Before the, really. we, we have some of the best tech minds in Nigeria, but yeah. we don't seem to be making use yeah. of that. So let, let's quickly speak on the new political alliance being you've spoken about by Richard Sokorocha. <laughs> political alliance. You, you see the way political platform work in Nigeria is that there's no real difference. We were able to talk about liberals and conservatives in America. In Nigeria, political platforms are just platform for seeking political office. If one platform doesn't give it to you, you go to the other. If both of them seem to be rejecting you, you start talking of a third party or a particular. <laughs> that, is the, that is the whole matter. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about the people. It's not about it's ideology. It's about himself and his political ambition. Nothing more than that. It's, it's interesting. Terrible. All right. Uh, we're out of time. Yes, that's it. Uh, that's the much we can take. There's actually the Daily Independent, but like like we said, that's the much we can take. Thank you very much, Mr. Bolaho Olajide and Thanks Mr. Adimola Akimbola for joining us via Zoom on uh, Off the Press on the Breakfast this morning. So we'll take a break here and we'll Thank return you. with... Enjoy your ino inauguration, by the way. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank All right. So we'll return with events that occurred right. today in history, like Osari, you like to say, many, many years ago.